Thank you for joining us this afternoon. In this pandemic, we are separated by the division of our individual computer screens, but Gen Z knows that's where it should end, as implementing diversity, equity, and inclusion to unite us should have been in action yesterday. 64% of Gen Zers believe that supporting issues online is more effective than doing something in their communities. All from their fingertips, these social justice go-getters demand for greater DEI in the workplace, committing to hold our social and legal institutions as well as brands accountable. The Glenn M. Broom Center for Professional Development and Public Relations is energized by Gen Z and rolls up its sleeves to ensure we can all use our voice because the time to make change was yesterday. Hi, I'm Gabby Romero, and I had the honor of serving team lead of the Broom Center in this semester's JMS 585 campaign. Established by Glenn Broom in 2012, the Broom Center invests in the professional development of public relations students, faculty, and pros who push the status quo of the industry. Hallmarked as the professor of the profession, Broom co-wrote the most used PR textbook that practitioners use today, as well as the definition of PR that we all rely on in Cutlip and Center's effective public relations. He taught at SDSU for more than 30 years, and after his passing, the Broom Initiative was born. Since 2019, the Broom Center continues to invest in the professionals that better the practice through funded projects, and webinars are one of these projects. Every year, the Broom Center hosts its annual center lecture with its namesake, Alan H. Center, who was a mentor and friend of Broom, co-author of Effective Public Relations, founding member of Public Relations Student Society of America, and former lecturer at SDSU. Through the center lecture, the Broom Center can foster diverse voices. Now, our campaign team had a wingspan that stretched from Honolulu all the way to Hampton, Virginia to do just this, as we put on the fourth annual Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations. We, as a Hispanic serving institution, united with the historically black college and university, Hampton University. We had a mission to keep supporting young PR pros, bring awareness to the need to diversify the PR industry, and teach the next generation how that they can use their voice in the workplace. Hi everyone, I'm Daniela Rodiles, research leader of this campaign. And before diving deep into our research findings, I'd like to show you where the Broom Center started and where it is now. As my team and Gabriela mentioned earlier, the Broom Center started in 2012 when Dr. Glenn and Broom established at San Diego State University. The Broom Initiative was born in 2019, and the Pierce Icon events were hosted in San Diego that gathered PR professionals, leading the Broom Center to be known across the country. Later on that year, the Broom Center established a webinar series called the Pansy PR Professional Tour. Their first webinar on Cog and Your Foot in the Door, hosted in May 2020, featured two PR practitioners of color. And after this virtual event, moving forward, the Broom Center took an active role in including more diverse panelists and featured webinars. A second webinar on Cog PR with Purpose, hosted in December 2020, featured three different practitioners of color. And from the previous work that the Broom Center has done under the Broom Initiative to provide the best professional development tools, our client can keep pushing forward and supporting our industry while also being an ally to, to social justice issues. Moving on into our quantitative research, we distributed a pre-event survey using Qualtrics, which resulted in 44 completed responses. We were wanting to know respondents' awareness and knowledge about their Broom, their Broom Center, and its resources. If we take a bigger look at the progress of knowledge the Broom Center has made in past intellectuals, we take 3CL, for example. There's a low level of knowledge throughout the three scales, as you can see there in the red dots. Our findings show in the orange dots, respondents are moderately aware of the Broom Center. And although there's been an increment in knowledge, it shows that there's an opportunity to increase knowledge in arts and to lecture. We also wanted to know respondents' attitude towards the Broom Center reputation, how likely they will be to maintain a relationship with the organization and the success later on. We found the respondents had a high level of positive attitude towards the Broom Center. We also asked them how much they take advantage of the Broom Center's resources now. So respondents show that they're moderately aware of the, of the services the Broom Center provides. Uh, at the last scale, you see, you can see there, we wanted to know the Broom Center that we wanted to know respondents what they think the Broom Center stands and the likeliness of talking about it to others. As you can see there in the last scale, our average score is pretty high. We found that those from pre R marketing backgrounds have more knowledge about their Broom Center and are most likely to spread the word about it to others. And last but not least, we also assess the diversity, inclusion, belonging scale to know PR professionals' feelings about diversity and inclusion in the industry. Our average score from PR professionals from PR professionals with 3.89. And although it's a matter of level, we know average, we know awareness here is not the challenge, it's implementation. Now moving on into our qualitative research, we designed a constructive set of interview questions to talk to three PR students from National PRSSA all the way to local PRSSA chapters. And we wanted to know what they think about virtual events and how much they know about the Broom Center. 
And one of the major facts or interviews told us is that webinars need to be more substantive. Super takes offense students' everyday routine, so students are looking for topics that align their personal career goals and their values. Since the students rely on social media to know about events or interviews that that link it into Twitter with the best platforms to discover and register for webinars, with email being the best second method to receive updates about them. Our interview said that they're most likely to register if, if others are already tweeting about it, putting great emphasis on early promotion as well. In terms of their knowledge toward the Room Center, all three of our interviewees had low knowledge but suggested that we collaborate with out of state to state chapters since their mission is to also increase diversity and inclusion strategies as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Tatiana Simeon and I'm our team's logistics lead. Now, continuing on with our research process, after conducting our initial research and receiving feedback from our quality surveys and the student interviews, we got a really great idea of where the Broom Center stood among its publics. So then knowing how to actually reach our target audience became the next step to our campaign. So with information provided by informal research, backed by our interview findings, we discovered social media to be the best tool to get our message across. But first, we obviously had to assess how the Broom Center was currently doing on its social platforms. So we asked ourselves a few questions before we began, like what content do people enjoy seeing from the Broom Center? What do they not prefer? Which platform gets some more engagement, more views? And after we asked all these questions, we put together a list of about 50 more questions that we were gonna use to guide us in our coding process. And in the end, we analyzed 393 total posts from the Broom Center's Instagram and Twitter account. So what did we look at? We looked at profile clicks, reply rates, likes per post, engagement ratios, and discovered that if we wanted more people to engage with our content, Instagram was gonna be the best platform to use, likely due to the fact that the platform is constantly turning over with new young users. But if we cared more about eyes being seen in our content, Twitter would be the best, which would definitely benefit us more as professionals tend to use the platform more frequently. In terms of what people want to see and what they like the most, you'll see here in the two charts we've read to your right that post mentioning someone affiliated with the Broom Center and post mentioning a Broomy both receive the highest engagement rates on either platform than any of the other 43 items we coded. And thanks to those findings, our team knew what channels to use to promote the Broom Center and how most effectively to do so. So now moving into our competitor analysis, we identified the Broom Center's four major competitors. Seeing that the focus of our campaign this year was centered around using your voice and promoting DEI, we focused part of our analysis on areas surrounding that. You can see in our chart here that the Broom Center is in really great standing amongst its competitors when it comes to DEI. With HBCU collaborations, DEI-focused webinars and resources, the Broom Center doesn't lack many of the major DEI-type offerings that their competitors supply. But as far as we were able to take away from our competitors, there was an amazing opportunity where we saw having the use of an ASL interpreter and Spanish translator to be extremely beneficial when increasing feelings of inclusion and diversity. And as far as non-DI internal resources offers goes, one of the biggest things we noticed that all of our competitors offered that we didn't were newsletters. But if you stick around, you'll see that that's no longer the case. When we look deeper in our analysis and we look at the internal factors of the Broom Center, we know the organization has collaborated with PRSA and webinars in the past. We know the center is established in the HSI located in our border town, and we know the Broom Center is flexible and open for change in terms of pushing forward DEI opportunities. The Broom Center is a member of the Diversity Action Alliance Coalition, and that it owns the Black Mass Communication Scholars and the Broom Speakers Bureau. And just this spring, it's taking class of the Student Fellows Program extended in collaboration with Hampton University in HBCU. As we gather all of our external factors, we found there's low level of knowledge of the Broom Center in the SESU community and out of state PRSA state chapters. When we look for opportunities where the Broom Center could grow, we found that the center can strengthen their relationship with HSI and HBCUs across the country. And so the Broom Center has hosted webinars in the past, we found this to be a great opportunity to grow our knowledge to our SESU community who may be located across the country as well. And last but not least, in terms of threats and potential factors that can slow down the Broom Center's growth, we found that there may be a slow rise in national recognition due to its competitors being so well known on a national level. And we piled up our external and internal factors. We found that as of 2021, the Broom Center's reach expands across 31 states. And the center continues to collaborate with big name organizations like PRSSA and forming connections with East Coast based HBCUs. The knowledge of the Broom Center and its resources continue to increase. But despite this fact, the Broom Center is yet to be fully recognized on a national scale. Now, before we could actually go into our planning, first we had to figure out what exactly we were planning for. What are we looking to achieve here? So after sitting down with our client and hearing how she wanted to see the Broom Center grow over the next few months, we were able to agree that by the end of our campaign, we wanted to see the Broom Center get national recognition, 
and then the planning could begin. Hi, I'm Elise Frankel and I'm book lead and logistics support. Our interviews made it obvious that our resources were going unused. Our survey showed us that most people didn't know who we were and no one was speaking about us to their friends, which an interviewer indicated was a major way that most students and professionals hear about events, resource centers, et cetera. This led us to create five vital objectives to guide our campaign. We aimed for a 5% increase for each of our objectives to be completed by April, 2021 with the exception of 4CL attendance, which had a target completion date of March, 2021. Our five objectives were to increase word of mouth about the Broom Center, increase out-of-state use of the Broom Center's resources. The Broom Center was in 31 states pre-webinar and we hope to increase that number. Increase out-of-state participation of the center lecture. And for this, we partnered with PRSSA to expand our network and attract a larger audience increase positive attitude toward the Broom Center, and increase knowledge of the Broom Center. So then the next step began to identify the target publics would be. Our team decided that of course PR practitioners would be included as well as journalists. We would include HBCUs as the Broom Center is already currently taking steps to connect SDSU with other East Coast historically Black institutions. And since SDSU is the Broom Center's home base, ensuring its name recognition for students and staff in the PRSSA chapter was also a priority as we continue nurturing those current relationships and increasing their knowledge of the center's resources. And finally, we can't forget about reaching out to our PRSA and PRSSA chapters throughout the country. And when we do reach out, we want to make sure we're being uniform in what we're saying, making sure we're hitting all of our key topics. The biggest thing we promoted this year was the center lecture. So when we spoke about it, we made sure to mention how it was centered around how professionals can learn to use their voices within their organizations. It was in collaboration with PRSSA. Those who signed up would get swag, play black options, have an ASL and Spanish translation option, and ultimately it'd be an investment in their career. We of course had to mention Troy, making clear that he was the absolute best person to teach us the do's and don'ts to speaking up in the workplace and amplifying his DI-centered accomplishments in order to do so. We definitely had to speak about the Broom Initiative, tying in how the Broom Center believes DI should be embedded to everything an organization does, and just speaking a bit about how we give back through our program, making sure not to come off as show off or performative, but simply show the public and other organizations how easy it can be to collaborate with HBCUs, create a speakers bureau for people of color, host DI-centered webinars, and just overall be more inclusive and more representative. Hi everyone, my name is Alexa Gutierrez and I was the messaging lead in graphics and design support for this campaign. We hit the ground running with our implementation as we sent pitches to journalists with the goal of gaining media coverage and announcing the opportunity to interview keynote speaker Troy Blackwell Jr. himself. In our pitches, we included insights from Blackwell's speech, access to our landing page, and a LinkedIn connection opportunity with Blackwell. For further promotion, we sent out a press release to PR news associations, such as PRSA Strategies and Tactics, that focus on how comms pros can advocate for brands, and by posting a calendar listing to the Professional Studies and Fine Arts SDSU website that announced the fourth annual Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations that took place on March 11th. Blackwell chose for the Broom Center to sponsor City College of New York PRSSA dues for five students rather than ask for an honorarium for speaking at the center lecture. To implement this, we created a video competition where those participating had to create a one minute video describing how one of their favorite companies or brands use their voice to address a social justice issue. The top five videos had their PRSSA dues paid for in full and had their videos uploaded as an Instagram feature. The winners were announced during the lecture. We also hosted a virtual movie night with the Room Center, PRSSA, and Hamptons PRSSA. We sent a newsletter with a playback video to watch our webinar, along with some fun Room Center swag as a thank you to those who attended our webinar that aimed to teach young PR pros how to use their voice in the workplace. We chose the movie Soul due to the soul-stirring message about how you have the power to change your own life and that we are all young PR pros that have the power to shape the industry for the better. Hola a todos, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Mi nombre es Paulina Aguilar. I was the social media and graphics lead for the Broom Center. Adding to our implementation, we were able to explore all areas and demographics of the Broom Center. With the use of social media and learning the branding of the client, we had the opportunity to reach a more diverse audience and put the client in the eye of the dancers. Upon starting our campaign, we noticed the Broom Center gravitated more to Twitter and left behind one of their key audiences on Instagram, the Gen Z's. We revived the Broom Center's Instagram 
account by implementing a diverse content and introducing their audience to Instagram Reels created by our own team. Since our control center is located in San Diego and so close to the US and Mexico border, our strategy was to outreach the Spanish speaking community. We tweeted about our event in Spanish and posted Spanish Center lecture visuals on Instagram to start learning more about our followers and introduce the Broom Center to the Spanish speaking community. These tactics generated a higher engagement. Since we're all about amplifying voices, we participated in the Women's History Month on Instagram. We decided to change the color of our logo to purple for a whole month. We also participated in the World Autism Awareness Day by changing our logo to blue for the month of April. And we posted a photo giving an insight on adults with autism in the workforce. We wanted to work and inform our followers that there is a spot for everyone. So we include a Spanish interpreter and American Sign Language interpreter to our webinar. To reach more communities, we broke all barriers possible. To expand our audience even further, we introduced to our client the use of MailChimp and newsletters in both Spanish and English. These newsletters included upcoming events for our subscribers to keep them engaged in the Broom Center's loop. In creating an Instagram promotional video called It Start With Us, we included people from different backgrounds, genders, languages, and literally show our audience that it does start with us to change the industry. We wanted to break all barriers, and we're happy to say we did. We decided swag that clearly displays the Broom Center brand, Gensers being our key audience. We decided to create phone wallets with the client's logo. We also created water bottles that they are able to carry around everywhere they go. Hey everyone, my name is James Dunn and I'm the HR manager for this year's center lecture team. So now that we've covered all the other logistics for our campaign, let's talk about our evaluation. So as mentioned before, our team made a list of five objectives that would ultimately serve to assist the Broom Center achieve national recognition. So let's take a look at those objectives now and their results to find out how we did. So for objective number one, word of mouth communication is a powerful tool that can make an enormous impact. Our objective was to increase word of mouth communication by 5% and we were able to get a 3% increase. This still indicates positive progress overall for this aspect of the campaign. Then moving forward, let's talk about the overall usage of the Broom Center's resources. Since the Broom Center is based in San Diego, we decided that in order to reach national recognition, more people in the PR industry needed to know about the resources that they offer. Our objective was to increase out-of-state use of the Broom Center's resources by 5%, and we fell just short with an overall increase of 2.7%. There was still an increase indicating that more out-of-state people are beginning to use the Broom Center's resources. And then moving on to lecture attendance. So to begin, getting people to attend a webinar during a pandemic can be difficult. Conflicting schedules, Zoom fatigue, and other web-related factors make it difficult to attract a large sum of attendees for an event like this. Our objective was to increase out-of-state participation at the 4CL lecture by 5%. This year's lecture featured representation from 37 states and additional international representation. So comparing these numbers to the average of the three, previous 3P lectures, we were able to meet our objective and managed to get an overall increase of 25%. This was a huge success given the circumstances of the pandemic, and we were also able to get considerably high attendance and an even higher number of registrants with a total of 416 people that received video playback. And then moving on for our fourth objective, we have increasing positive attitudes towards the Room Center by 5%. So establishing and maintaining positive relations with your public is vital if your organization wants to expand to a national level. We were able to meet this objective with a 5.5% increase in positive attitudes, indicating that people are satisfied with the Broom Center. And then lastly, we wanted to increase the general knowledge of the Broom Center by 5%. This is arguably the most important objective because without knowing what the Broom Center even is, it would be nearly impossible to expand it. To our satisfaction, we were able to increase our knowledge of the Broom Center by 33%, surpassing our original goal by a landslide. So now that more people have a basic understanding of what the Broom Center is, national recognition is just right around the corner. On Instagram, we saw an increase in accounts reach, many coming from New York, Gainesville, Chula Vista, and Los Angeles, all areas we reached out to with our messaging during our implementation stage. In all, there was about a 46.7% increase in eyes seeing our content on Instagram after we began implementing. By consistently posting and using Instagram Reels, we've increased our views from the low hundreds to almost 2,000. We also noticed that people started to save and send our posts on Instagram. In the month of February, the Broom Center's Twitter account averaged around a 2% engagement rate per post. 
And after implementing our Spanish tweets in order to connect with our Spanish speaking publics, we saw a jump in engagement going all the way up to 8.2%. Based on the research we conducted throughout the course of this campaign, we have created a list of recommendations for the Broom Center to continue to gain recognition and prove itself as a top professional development center in the field of public relations. We recommend to establish relationships with other PR organizations and publications, and that the Broom Center hosts sponsored networking events online and at SDSU's campus. We also recommend that the Broom Center produce a quarterly newsletter and to continue to collaborate with people of color. So now moving on to more of the fun stuff, let's talk about the money aspect side of things. So at the beginning of our campaign, our team was graciously gifted a total budget of $2,000 to assist the Broom Center with its expansion. The majority of this spending went toward promo materials for the webinar, which included flyers, brand set, branded Broom Center merchandise, which were those phone wallets and the steel water bottles we mentioned earlier, and a series of professional grade promotional videos. So the total cost of these items was $1,116.38. And since the Broom Center is all about DEI, we hired two language interpreters, one Spanish and one American Sign Language for the webinar to make it more accessible. The total cost for both of these interpreters was $332.50. And then after the event, we sent out Broom Center branded packages for people that filled out our post-event survey, which cost $93.03. And then lastly, it was an honor to get the opportunity to sponsor PRSSA dues for five hardworking PR students from the City College of New York, which happens to be Blackwell's alma mater, so that was really cool. And this gesture cost us $450, bringing us slightly over budget with a total uh, expenditures of $2,203.30. Thank you, y gracias for attending our PR debut. We worked tirelessly as United Team, and it's so rewarding and an honor to be able to share our campaign with you. So we hope you'll connect with the Broom Center on their social media, as well as the rest of our team on LinkedIn. And Tatiana will actually drop our LinkedIn handles in the chat. So we'll now open the floor to questions and discussion about our work. Thank you.